<sighs> what kit should we build today? I don't know. I've got quite a few Tamiya's maybe. We could do a Tamiya. Uh, what could we do? VX01 maybe? <sighs> but a lot of people are really nagging me for the top cat. It's time to build it. Dicey Kicks on today's show, we finally get round to building the top cap from Schumacher. Now this one's been sitting for quite a while and I'm surprised how many of you actually keep asking me when's the top cap coming, when's the top cap coming, when's the top cap coming. Well that day is today <laughs> and believe it or not I have been looking forward to building this as well because I think this would be perfect on my little tiny grass track out in the garden. It will be super nimble, the angle of attack that you get from the steering on this is fantastic. Let me just tell you a quick thing about this car. This is a reread by Schumacher from the original car that came out uh, in 1988 under kit U404J. Now this is just not any kit. This kit has pedigree and winning pedigree at that. This car, this one, not this one specific, but the design of this car went on to win the 1989 EFRA European Championship with Jamie Booth. That's how good this little buggy really is. Um, it has a 14 ball ball diff, which is actually invented by Cecil Schumacher, the guy who owns this company back in 1978. So we're talking serious engineering skill here. Also, what I really like about this car is it has the fantastic crash back system that the uh, Schumacher XLS has, the Schumacher Cat XLS, which I think is genius. And why we haven't seen that in more cars, I'll never know. So as you impact something, it actually rotates back. Now that was quite amazing in the Schumacher Cat cars, but in the Top Cat, it has lay down front shocks. That's why you don't see these big shocks because Cecil, he didn't like the look of the shocks and he wanted to keep it super clean. And I have to agree with him 100%. It looks fantastic. This is a really, really good looking buggy. And I love this clean look, which is what he was going for. But you can imagine if you're laying the shocks down and you're trying to add the crash back system into that tiny little area, it's super complicated. So uh, he did a fantastic job and I'm really looking forward to see just how how good this car is for myself because obviously uh, being a pro driver that's right <laughs> yeah, no but I'm sure it will be fantastic plus this will be a great car to put up against the Nova Fox that I just built just to see the difference between what you have as a Tamiya driver fun car and then a serious bit of track um, weaponry here um, what else can I tell you about this? Well, um, Schumacher did a fantastic interview when this kit was uh, re-released, this classic. So I can highly recommend go out, go over there. I'll put a link in the description and he's talking about designing this car and it's really fascinating. So I can highly recommend it. Go check that out. But not until the end of this video, obviously. Right, so this is the Top Cat Classic. This was released in December 2018. Uh, this is kit K178, and this retails for about £179, give or take. I'll put what that is in euros and uh, dollars and things like that below. Um, you know, shop around. You can get it a little bit more, a little bit cheaper, but that's what I just looked on this morning, and that's what they're going for. So the transmission in this kit will take you to a 17.5 turn. But once you want to go lower than that, you've got to look at upgrading to the Pro Transmission. Now the Pro Transmission is U7600. They are about £53.89. Uh, I'll put below what that is in uh, euros and dollars and stuff like that for you. Now, me personally, I would like to see the Pro Transmission in the box from the beginning because you're paying in here, you're paying for a transmission that only gets you down to 
you know, 17.5. So ideally I'd rather have paid a little bit more and not the 53 pound and had the pro transmission in the box. But obviously as a business, they're trying to get their kits down as low as possible. And being that you get this car for 179 pound, you can't really argue that's pretty good value, especially when you start looking at the Vanquish VQS that's coming out and the Avantis there. I mean, obviously this is two wheel drive, so it's cheaper, but you're looking a lot more expensive. So value wise, this is a great kit. Um, I haven't built this yet. I'm hoping that building this is a little bit more easy and fun than the XLS, as I didn't enjoy the X uh, XLS build at all, even though I love the car. Um, so what else can I tell you about this car? Well, being two wheel drive, it shouldn't take too much effort to put it together. It's a metal pan stamp chassis, so it's pretty rigid. Um, so yeah, right, I'm gonna lay it all out and then uh, we'll kick it off the build. Now, obviously, just like all the others, there's no point in you watching me put out all the parts, so we're gonna skip ahead until we're ready to start building. It's a little bit different to Tamiya as we work with bags. And I start with parts bag A, and then we do step one, step two, step three, step four. So it is different to how you work with Tamiya. So we start with this bag. So there's no point getting all the bags out yet because we do uh, we work through the manual as per the bags. There is one thing I found. There is an amendment sheet with additional washes by the look of it. So we'll come to that. Uh, later on so first things first we have to open up this bag and we just pick step one it's that easy but it is a bit different so if you're used to doing Tamiya's and you come to this you might feel a bit unnerved by it but it's not that difficult at all you just start with t60843 step one top cap and then you get top step two step three step four step five it's as easy as that Right, let's crack on and uh, get this thing built as fast as possible. So I'm looking forward to taking this out and running it in the garden. So there you go, I've just finished page eight and that's the front bulkhead and arms done. Now I used a brass upgrade part from Schumacher. Um, I can highly recommend it to add a little bit more weight. That's under U7682 brass top plate. The one thing I'm a bit concerned about when looking at adding upgrades to Schumacher cars is if you buy the part, the amount of work you've got to do dismantling and fitting is quite a lot. So like this part is really deep in there. So if you're thinking about building one of these, my probably the advice would be buy the upgrade parts before and then do it as part of the build. Now this beautiful brass plate fits perfectly in, into this. It's actually quite a complicated part. It connects to multiple parts. So they did a really good job of getting the precision correct on that front. Um, the only thing I would be careful of is when you have the arms fitting to the main plate that gives it pinion uh, from that point, you have to put a uh, clip on each end and there is no space in there to do it. So it's better to do that early. But as a tip, if you don't and you realize that you've got to fit a clip in there, what I found that worked is you get one of your Tamiya Allen keys that are slightly magnetic, put the little, uh, is it C clip, E clip, I forget which one it is, and have it sticking out and then just line it up, push it in, and then you can clip it all the way in. And that works really well. Um, that's what I did on both of mine because I forgot to do it. So I did it as per the manual, but that worked brilliantly and it didn't take me any time at all. So uh, I can highly recommend that. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it really. So next we move on to page nine and we pick up step nine. It's actually there's a bearing in there as well. So we're now moving on to 
I'm not sure what this is. Is this the main hub? This is one of the upright hubs, I think. Right, let's keep going. So that's the front end all bolted down to the main chassis. Nothing difficult there at all, pretty easy. The bolts that go into this section here, which is on step 15, what I found worked was if you got your Allen key, put the bolt on the end, then dropped it down into the position and then pushed it with your finger because it's actually captive there. Whereas if you're trying to push it in, you won't line it up. So that worked really well, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, putting the actual um, uh, adjustable uh, arms in, that's pretty straightforward. Nothing special there between that and any other car. I will adjust them in the end, just get them all true and straight, but that's good enough for now. Right, we now look at moving towards the back. We are on page 14, number 16, which is then basically putting the upright rear bulk head on. So let's carry on and so far I'm enjoying this one. And there's the rear gearbox in the car. So it's starting to look like a proper buggy now, which is always a nice feeling. We still have quite a way to go with all the suspension and things like that, as well as all the electronics. But once you start getting both the arms on, it starts to look like an actual car. Uh, a few things that I found when you put the uh, diff in with the belt, I found it was better to, to hold them both together and then push with the belt on and then push them in instead of put that in, try and put the belt in and then try and get it round. Uh, so do that, it's much quicker and then you can just hold it. If you pinch the belt, it holds them tight and then you can just push them in. So uh, yeah, apart from that, um, what else was there? The little tiny screws that hold the i'll put a picture up here of what i'm talking about they're tiny so you think when you're screwing them in this is a bit naff a bit plasticky and a bit weak and you wouldn't think it works but once you actually screw it all together it all kind of becomes quite strong and um, when you're adjusting the belt tension as well you kind of think the screws are just a little bit short and they're not going to grab properly but they do they seem to work um, that part, I know they do that part in metal, so I would recommend that because um, it just feels a bit cheesy. But that's just a feeling, it's not based on any kind of weakness or anything like that. It just that's how it feels to me, anyway. Right, what's next? Now we move on to what are we doing? We are on step 31, page 29. It looks like we're doing the other side of the hubs, the rear hubs by the look of it, and the other side of the drive shafts. Right, let's carry on. I am actually enjoying this one. One little difficulty I did have um, was lining up one of these. 
one of the arms to actually screw through. I struggled a little bit to, to get the bolt through. The other one went fine, but for, for one reason or another, I had to kind of back off the second screw, push them into the hole and then screw it in. So that's another little tip for you if you struggle to get one of these in, is back it back off the first screw and then get the screw through the hole and then use the screws to pull it in tight. Once it's in, it's fine, everything's working as it should, but it just didn't line up. It was about half a mil out, but once uh, in, the other one just went straight in. So there we go. Right, let's carry on. I've got the back all on now and it's really starting to look like a car. Nothing super specially difficult about that. The only thing that people tend to complain about, and I have to agree a little bit, is putting the, what part is it? Let me go back to it. It is uh, step 35, page 31. I'll put a picture up here. And it's actually putting in the drive shaft um, swivel point. So what I've done is I actually took a close-up shot of me doing it. So I'll play that for you now and you can have a look how I found what works best for me because a lot of people struggle with it. The, you, these tools are really good. You should definitely use these. Um, that makes life easier. Right, I'll cut to that and then we'll be right back. Now this can be a bit fiddly, so take your time. I found some needle nose pliers was a good way to start. You can then push the first pin through the hole just a little bit. Then you place it on a piece of paper and push down to make sure that the rod goes all the way into the hole. It helps for then when you're applying the tool that's provided, you need to slide it in. So it needs to be all the way over. Then you push down and it should click into place like you've just seen. It takes a reasonable amount of force, but don't overdo it. So there you go. I hope you found that useful. That's the only real challenge where you're trying to push it in and it can be a bit frustrating. Right, what's next? Well, now we move on to, where are we now? I've lost my space. Page 34, number 38. So we're gonna fit these servo in. Now you need a half height servo for this. Um, due to the way that the shocks lay down, it doesn't really leave you a lot of space. So let's start fitting the electronics. Check out one of these videos for some more RC fun. <laughs> 